Video game unlockables are supposed to be lovely bits of content that either act as rewards to players that put in the hard work or see things through to completion. And for the most part, it doesn't really even matter whether the content isn't essential to the game itself, like an outfit or a new gun skin, because the art of unlocking it has either been fun enough or just the bragging rights are enough to justify the effort. However, the items on this list, well, they don't play so nice, and in fact are rewards in name only, because what they actually do is end up embarrassing or even going so far as to take the piss out of those who unlock them. These are the monuments to wasting time and testing patience, and it's here today that I display my findings to you, you lovely people. You're very welcome. I'm Jules, your one per list wonder for whatculture.com, and these are nine video game rewards that just humiliated players. Number 9. Dirge of Cerberus Double Jumping So this one isn't so much of a reward that's unlocked per se, and more one that was just added in as a bonus feature into the US and EU versions of the game. For the most part, there were actually a lot of beneficial tweaks in the transfer to the aiming and even how Vincent moved with more options to dodge and feint around enemies. Yet when it came to the Double Jump edition, well, the devs overlooked one tiny, teeny tiny little detail. You see, when you add in a feature like this, you should probably check to see whether the video game architecture was changed to support this as well, e.g. being able to actually jump over walls and reach ledges thanks to this new elevated leap. Well, they didn't, and as such, the double jump provides nothing at all, leaving you infuriated as you clearly are getting enough height to clear a wall but being blocked from doing it. It's a small annoyance, but one that's only magnified when you see how many shortcuts this would open up if it was able to be used properly. Number 8. Watch Dogs – Spec Ops SMG 11 Watch Dogs 1, outside of all of the bluster around performance issues, was, in places, a really fun action stealth game, offering you a lovely balance of tech-based stealth and defensive options. And one of the highlights of the game was seeing these two meet in the 15-gang hideout submissions. In these, you had to take down goons and prime targets, and many had little twists and interesting layouts. It was kind of like playing Hitman within Watch Dogs. And tantalizingly, the game mentions a reward for bagging all the baddies in the 15 areas. Well, I hate to break it to you, but that reward sucks, as it's the Spec Ops SMG 11, a gun which, while admittedly being fast, is something you can already buy for a paltry 22 grand at most gun stores. It was incredibly disappointing to unlock, especially seeing as you've most likely managed to cap these challenges without the use of one. It's like the game was just shrugging its shoulders and saying, well, you had your fun doing them, so just be content with that, okay? Outrage, I say. Number 7. We Love Katamari – Song for a Rose You know what? I do bloody love Katamari because this game is one of those beautiful pseudo-puzzle games that just embraces its weirdness and just has fun with itself. A wash in outstanding visuals, it's a game for all the family, and has been made even better by the soundtrack which, as you'd expect from a game in which you end up rolling cities around, scooping up ships and the like, is utterly bonkers and amazing. Yet, if you find yourself thinking, boy howdy, I, I sure would like to unlock a new song to add to this ear orgasm, well friend, I've got good news, but also bad news, and that you will need one million roses to get this. Yes, that's right, one million roses to unlock one new song. Now to be fair, as you'd expect, it's an alternative banger, but one million, come on Jeremy, that's insane. Even the king has something to say about this, noting, We're rather impressed. Such a pointless exercise. Although he does say afterwards that it was to teach you to never give up, to face your problems head on. So while it's sweet to get a single... Single song, it sure did take a long old while to get there. And worst of all, you most likely will never want to play this again because of how long it took to even get this in the bloody first place. Number 6. Resistance – Fall of Man – Skeleton Skin Resistance Fall of Man was a slightly rough around the edges but altogether fun sci-fi shooter putting you in the mostly, mostly soiled shoes of Nathan Hale. I mean, come on, wouldn't you be cacking your kecks when taken on the Chimera? They look like if snowmen were built out of spiders. No thank you. As you might expect from a first-person shooter, there were, of course, many challenges to overcome, and by challenge I mean shoot things in the face, and several difficulties to do it on, the hardest of which was known as Superhuman, which only the mad would try and tackle. The game also supported a multiplayer, and rumours circulated that there was a great skin to be unlocked for this mode if you could beat this ungodly difficulty. And in truth, there was. The skeleton skin. However, as you might be able to see from the lack of footage online and in this video, this skin 
Fortune was shed quicker than your mother's corset strings when this handsome rogue drops by for tea. There's my one per list. Yeah, so the reason why this bony boy wasn't in the game for long was because other players found it difficult to see his pearly whites in the game, so the devs took him out and replaced him with a generic looking soldier. Number 5. Goddess. Literally nothing. Well, here's a sorry tale of the man who often speaks in tall ones. Peter, I swear one day I'll stop making this up, Molyneux and his game Goddess. Or should we actually even call it his game? As remember, the whole premise of Goddess was that while for many you'd be mucking it out, slaving it away and working hard to unlock features, one player, one player would be the god of the game. And I don't just mean the god of the server, I mean the god of the entire game, able to do whatever they wanted and would receive a share of some of the profits. That pleasure fell to Brian Henderson, who won the Gift of the God in 2015. What a reward, right? Money and power? Those are two things I've only ever sniffed at, so sign me up! However, as you might expect with the father of all well-intentioned lies, Molyneux and his team didn't deliver on their deity-fueled desires, and Henderson received no notification or anything resembling a reward. Then, in 2017, Stinky Pete revealed that the game had made no money, and therefore Henderson wouldn't receive a goddamn thing. Number 4. Jack and Daxter – Secret Ending Jack and Daxter, or as I like to call it, the tale of Josh Brown and Rich Hudson, is one of my favourite PS2 platformer games. <sighs> not of all time, actually, just it's pretty close though, uh, but it's not hard to see why. The controls are so tight and the gameplay so appealing that it's a joy from start to finish. And by that I mean it's really a joy to finish it in the regular non-100% fashion as that's easy to accomplish and ties things up nicely. However, if you decide to go through the game and collect every power cell when you're informed you need to unlock this door, in quite on-the-nose fashion I might add, then you'll unlock this secret ending. And what happens? Well, the door opens, the gobby weasel says, What is it? And then you look at it in a blinding white light, and then, boom, cut to credits. I'm sorry, what? You're telling me that this cutscene, which has taken hours to unlock, amounts to, well, absolute jack? Pathetic. Number three, Dragon Quest Heroes Experience Orb. If you've had any hands-on time with Dragon Quest Heroes, you'll know that it's a kind of like a classic RPG tale bolstered by low-down and dirty Dynasty Warriors combat, and yes, I will always call it Dynasty Warriors come at me. However, as you might expect from a game based around grinding more slimes than the blob at the club, experience points are often hard to come by and will see you replaying the same missions over and over, farming areas to buff up your chosen party. Well, says the game, how about we give you an experience orb, known as the elevating orb that increases increases your experience earned by 5%. Does that sound nice? Well, yes, said many of the player base, wiping their sweaty brow from all of the button mashing. Well, here's the twist. You're going to have to beat Atlas, who's about as easy to get over as Mount Everest in flip-flops. It's easily the hardest fight in the game, which means in order to best this beast, you'll need to be at high levels anyway. Therefore, a reward of an item that increases experience gained sounds pretty bloody useless, doesn't it? And for those of you thinking that you can just carry it forward to New Game Plus, you're right, but the orb only gives you minimal defense, so you'll be trading in tiny increments in EXP for taking huge damage if you get hit. It is not worth it, let me tell you. Number 2. The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild – Golden Poop now, a lot of you were probably expecting this to be on the list, so I won't disappoint you more than I already do and deliver the goods. Yes, it's true that for turning in 900 Korok Seeds to Hetsu, you get a rather shiny and more rather likely smelly gift. And the best part is, is that the devs intentionally did this to rib the player. Speaking to IGN, Hidemaro Fujibayashi said the following, We just kind of thought it would be funny to make that a big joke. It's just the backstory in the game the whole way through is that the Korok seeds are actually Korok poop. So while it is just clearly a little joke, maybe the devs could have done it in a way that didn't require hours of searching and for the reward itself to do something other than be a literal poo pin. <sighs> and number one, Super Mario 64 DS, no Yoshi. Now, Mario 64 is a platforming game that many would consider to be the greatest platform game, and say it with me, kids, on the N64. Got you again there, didn't I? It's a fantastically realized game with interesting levels, insane amounts of replayability, and a charming allure that sees it regularly top lists all around the office. However, Super Mario 64 DS messes with the formula just a little bit. And for the most part, it's actually brilliant fun changes, like adding in new challenges, finally letting people play as Luigi after that whole Luigi is hidden in the code hoax on the original, revised graphics, and even a multiplayer mode. 
However, you might start to notice something a bit weird. You start the game as Yoshi. Yeah, the same lovable green dino dude who you only usually get to see in the game once you've gotten 120 stars and beaten Bowser for the third time, and he's now a starting character. So who's going to be in his place? Well, to find out, you're going to need to now gather 150 stars this time round, and using the cannon will net you the last rabbit for Luigi's minigame. Oh, well, that's something, I guess. Oh, wait, no, it's not. It's worth absolutely nothing, as it's nearly identical to the other minigames that you can unlock. God damn you, Luigi! And there we go, those were nine video game rewards, you can't see me air quoting there, but I definitely am, that humiliated players. Let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below, and if you want to humiliate yourself a bit more, then go to shop.whatculture.com and check out the silly t-shirts that I've got on sale at the moment. You have indeed been awesome, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye!